I want to put forward to you that your customers are lying to you. And what do we mean by that? So you are all involved in many sales transactions and, and sales proposals. When those sales opportunities close, either they close because you lost the deal, you won the deal, or maybe the customer didn't do anything at all. I think many of us uh, make attempts to figure out what happened. The problem is that the basic mechanism for feedback that you have as CEOs is generally broken. Because, uh, 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 particularly in the case of losses, um, when a customer doesn't buy your product, there are, there's almost no incentive for them to have a difficult conversation with your sales rep to give honest feedback. And so what they typically do, and I, I hope it's okay for me to use this analogy, is it's a little bit like a relationship breakup. You know, it's not you, it's me. That's why I can't buy your product. It's my, it's, we have some issues here. And so that's the first kind of communication from the buyer to your salesperson. And then of course your salesperson comes to your VP of sales or to you directly and says, it's not me, it's them, <laughs> right? Uh, and so the uh, responsibility goes outwards. And they may be very honestly reporting the feedback that they got, but the feedback is fundamentally flawed. And so you end up with um, very faulty feedback and you are ultimately trying to make decisions to prioritize changes and, and uh, prioritize initiatives in your organization and often you're basing that on faulty information. So we have bad leads, you know, our product is missing features, our product is too expensive, we have credible competitors who are trashing us at every turn. Our competitors are willing to reduce their price by 90%. Why can't I also reduce my price? And you know, if you're like a lot of CEOs that I've talked to, you've tried lots of things. You add those features, you drop your price, and suddenly, you know, strangely, the, deals, the deal outcomes don't necessarily change. So if you're not getting the truth, my question for you yeah, sorry, I'll say one more thing before that. You know, it, when we don't have good data, um, opinions rule. And, and typically, you know, the opinions, the value of the opinion will vary, will vary based on the size of the business card. And so, you know, our product manager might have a more important opinion, and then our VP of sales has a bigger business card, so they have a, a bigger opinion. And then maybe we come in as a founder and we get to trump everything. But the fact is that without a common sense of what's going on uh, and a common sense of the truth, we don't know what to do. So my question for you is, does anybody know what my question is for you? Can you handle the truth? <laughs> You can't handle the truth, right? Okay, this guy's name, anybody? Colonel Jessup, right? From the movie A Few Good Men. So those of you who haven't seen it need to go out and uh, just, just Google A Few Good Men and watch the first YouTube video that comes up and you will see one of the best pieces of uh, Hollywood um, film uh, that's out there. But he, you know, he talks about how you can't handle the truth. So the first question to ask yourselves as CEOs and leaders of your organizations is, can you handle the truth? Are you able to get, are you, able, are you willing to get and receive and process the feedback if you can get it? So I want to talk about a, a tool. Um, how many folks here know or heard about or have used the Johari window? Okay. Uh, so this is a fairly... Um, it's, it's, been around, it's, it's not new, it's, it's been around a while, this tool. It's a feedback for personal self-understanding. It's often used in executive coaching. Um, so we have uh, in the Johari window along the top um, uh, things that are known by, I'm gonna use my, myself as the example here, things that I know about myself, um, things that are, I don't know about myself. And then along the vertical axis, things that you know about me, and then things that you don't know about me. Okay, so the things that I know about me and you know about me are shared understanding. So it was already shared that I'm a founder and CEO of a company called Eigenworks. That's a shared piece of knowledge. There are some blind spots. There may be some things that you're seeing about me that I'm not seeing about myself. 
Likewise, there's hidden material. That is things that I know about myself, but you don't know about me. And then, you know, to, uh, to sort of allude to the famous Rumsfeld quote, there are the unknowns, uh, the unknown unknowns. Those are the most difficult. So um, the process of uh, getting feedback is, to, is there to reduce blind spots and then through selective self-disclosure to increase the shared understanding. Now we like to turn this on uh, the company and say that um, for every company we have an internal story that we tell ourselves and then we have things that we deny about ourselves or that, are, that, we, um, or that we don't know about ourselves and those are our blind spots. And similarly there are valid market perceptions and invalid market perceptions. And so the, the value, this should say that win-loss analysis, churn analysis, and direct buyer conversations help you um, um, uncover the truth. And so you can reduce blind spots in this way. And likewise, when you know what the incorrect market perceptions are, you can use marketing communications and sales enablement to expand this window, which I refer to as the envelope of authenticity. So this is what we want the market to know about us and what we want to know about ourselves. And so in order to do this, we need to have a good sense of the stories in our market. And so the broken chain of communication that we talked about earlier where the buyer has the uncomfortable conversation or won't respond at all after they decide to buy something needs to change, okay? It can no longer happen between the salesperson between the seller and the buyer. It's just too difficult to get a clear feedback. The salesperson needs to move on to the next deal, wants to learn from it, but isn't necessarily effective at, at facilitating that. And so you need to, as CEOs, make sure that in your organization, there's a direct connection between you or someone that you delegate this to and the buyer directly. So this is nat the natural home for this uh, keeper of stories is product marketing. There's also an emerging field of customer success. If you're in a subscription-based business, um, uh, the field of customer success, people who own customer success need to also keep the uh, customer story in mind. But we suggest keeping a uh, story keeper and having those conversations directly. Another point, and so these, these ha it ha it's low tech, but it has to involve conversations with actual buyers. And that, that, that's true about, businesses with small numbers of transactions, as well as businesses with large numbers of transactions. A couple of key points if you decide to go down this road of ingesting and understanding and seeing the truth. First is, um, a lot of people when they think about win-loss analysis, really are thinking about loss analysis. And I want to suggest to you that it's even more important for you to study your wins. Um, there's some good theory on this. There's some good stuff around. Um, if you look up Marcus Buckingham has written about starting with your strengths. As companies, we need to go and know where, where we succeed. How can we beat our competitors? Why is it that people choose us? There's lots more that could be said about this. The second thing is that if you truly want to definitively answer a research question, you need to have approximately 30 conversations around that research question. So it could be we're going into a new market and we have lots of opportunities but we have no conversions or just not enough conversions and not selling fast enough. People are taking all of our times to do demos but we're not closing deals. Well pick 30 of those, pick 15 successful ones that have crossed the threshold and pick 15 that haven't and then hold them up to the light together and compare them. But you need to have a critical number of conversations like that. Um, I'm going to um, uh, end here, but I want to talk, I want to just, actually, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put the final slide up. We have a toolkit that we're developing. So we've, we've developed um, techniques for having these conversations with clients, and it is a service that we sell, but what we're now trying to do is to give that method away to your companies. And so we've been out on the road um, um, talking about this, and uh, we are put, putting together a toolkit that your teams can use internally to have um, 
conversations with uh, your buyers using a model that we're developing called Buyer as Hero, which uses the, uh, the, the, the tools of storytelling and story understanding to understand what your buyers are doing and what fundamental change that they are trying to bring into their world. And that can really help you get a better sense of the truth and make the changes that you need to make to achieve your goals. Thank you.